What's up guys, welcome to my course management tips for high handicappers. This is the tips that I use to manage myself around the course to essentially score better and to eliminate those plus 100 rounds. I think if you do this and you're scoring in like the 105, 110 and that bracket consistently, if you follow these tips you'll definitely get under that 100 bracket and hopefully not see the triple figures anytime soon. So let's get straight into it with course management tip number one which is the same on every hole and I'm pretty sure it's pretty much the same for every handicap level and that is keep the ball in play. So when we're at a tee box, the one thing we want to do is make sure we're in play and not into like a hazard or out of bounds. So if there's out of bounds to the right and you have a miss off to the right, try to avoid the right hand side, use a different club, play a shorter distance, play smart. Okay, um, so we're gonna start off with this par three. Okay, so the second step after getting the ball in play and making sure it's in play is to avoid the hazards. So these could be like bunkers, ponds, uh, bushes, trees, pretty much anything which is going to cause you a lot of issues. And for us high handicappers, we want to avoid those at all costs. If it means taking less club, then we'll take less club. If it means hitting more club to definitely avoid it, we'll hit more club and work our way back. Uh, tip three, so this is everything which we're thinking before we even take a shot, is we look at the pin and where the green is and work our way back and figure out our best way to it. So we're gonna start off with a par three, so that's fairly, there's not as much course management thinking about going to it. Um, but this one, for example, if we can see, I'll try and get an aerial shot. To the right is out of bounds, so we don't wanna go right. Uh, off to the left and short left, there's a pond. Uh, so we don't wanna go in the pond. Uh, so just straight ahead <laughs> is the green. So we're gonna go for the number of the center of the green. 136 meters to the center. Uh, so I want to come a little short of centre because uh, going long is actually out of bounds as well but we do have a lot of room at the back to work with. My shot shape at the moment has been going off to the left so the only thing I need to be concerned of here is the pond to the left so I'm going to aim slightly to the right of the pin. Aim pretty much at that, uh, the big tree with our pitching wedge and this is a horrible amount of rain. <laughs> Again, we ended up pushing that a little bit to the right. But again, we took enough off it that we wouldn't have gone OB to the right unless we sliced it. And uh, thankfully that isn't my miss, so I don't need to really worry about that too much. If you're a slicer though, obviously avoid that. <laughs> okay, so we've ended up missing just off to the right. Distance was pretty good. You're not getting much rollout when the ground's as soft. Uh, so pretty much good shot at the pin. Uh, missed the water, which was the main hazard. And we've still got about 20 meters to our right for the out of bounds there. Okay, so we're gonna go here, uh, wet ground. Main thing is for us higher handicappers is just make sure we get on the green. The last thing we wanna do is if we're not comfortable with like a 60 degree, especially in wet ground where if you're trying to use the bounce and it just digs into the ground, you're gonna end up there and have the exact same shot again. So what we wanna do is maybe do a, a lower lofted one. So you can either do like a nine iron into the hill, bank it up there, or maybe like a 52, or uh, for me, I'm gonna try and use my 48 degree. And we're just gonna go a little toe down, little chip, try and land it just past. So again, when we're thinking about course management, we wanna think where we wanna land it. So I wanna land it around here. And I think the ball should go off to the left after it starts rolling. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna try and do. And you're not always gonna execute it perfectly because we're high handicappers, but if you can go into it with the right mindset and planning ahead, you're gonna score significantly better. Feet together, toe down, little putting action. Oh, <laughs> it lipped out, carried it much further than I was anticipating, but nearly chipped it in. Uh, but yeah, the one thing you want to make sure of when you're doing any kind of chipping where you're doing like toe down, you wanna make sure that you keep your weight down and don't lift up and back. Cause as soon as we start trying to scoop the ball, we're gonna end up topping it and it's just gonna roll up, either go long or we're just gonna dribble it to the front there. Okay, so I'm not sure if it counts as course management for putting. What we wanna look at is again, what's the worst case scenario when we putt? Um, there's not, from where I am right now, there's not too many worst case scenarios. Uh, in terms of like, if I was a bit further down there, it could roll off the back, so I wouldn't want to go long. Here, realistically, this is ones where you want to make sure that you give it a go, um, but at the same time, you want to make sure you've got an easy bogey. So situations like this, because you want to have your mentality going around the whole round, not just one hole. 
So situations like this, you'd never want to walk away with a free putt. A free putt from here is one thing you definitely want to eliminate. So if that means that you, you know, you just focus on distance and you come a little bit short, but give yourself an easy tap in bogey, over the grand scheme of things, that's going to be so much better for us. Uh, line it up, I think it's going right to left a little bit. This kind of distance, if you're uncertain and it's not 100% clear, then just aim center of the cup. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, <clears throat> annoying I didn't make it, but at the same time, I didn't free putt, so that's the, the main thing. What a lot of people fall into the habit of is you hear a lot of better golfers being like, the one thing they say is don't leave it short. However, if you're not a very good putter and you not leaving it short ends up doing something like this. You know, I've not left it short, but now I've got just as hard a putt coming back the other way. And now I end up, you know, two putting from here. Now I've got an easy tap in putt, but I've burned a whole extra shot. So again, when you're on the greens for high handicappers, let's try and get two putt regardless of the situation. Don't worry about sinking that long putt. Um, but at the same time, we want to be quite confident in like free putt situations. <laughs> to score well as a high handicapper, if you can go around and eliminate your free putts, regardless if it takes you six shots to get on the green, as long as you're just two putting, that is still better than free putting. So that's a shot which we can eliminate on every hole. So that's nine to 18 shots we can eliminate. Okay, again, so par four. Now this is the most common trap which all high handicappers and new people to the game fall into, is they get the big stick out and they're like, right, par four. I'm smacking this driver. I'm getting as close to the hole as I possibly can. Again, what's our technique? First one, be in play. Second one, see what the hazards are. Account for your shot shape. And then thirdly, we're gonna work from the green and work our way back. Okay, so this one, dog leg to the left. Okay, so really. Taking the driver, A, I'm not very confident at hitting it right now, so it doesn't make sense. Um, but also my miss is off to the right, and here, out of bounds is off to the right. Uh, this five wood does always pretty much guarantee it's gonna go to the left. Uh, so I'm gonna aim at the, um, the left of those four trees. So that's gonna be my aiming point, And then I should like draw slash hook it into the middle of the fairway. And pretty much case in point, and I'm in the middle of the fairway. Perfect example of why you don't take your biggest club, hit a club which you're confident at hitting, so you make sure we're in the fairway. And then we go up to the next shot and we plan from there. So again, going off that point of uh, hitting the club, which is smart for you to hit off the tee, it's knowing A, your shot shapes, how reliable you are to hit that club well. Uh, so for me, the driver doesn't go very uh what's the word uh it's not very consistent and the miss can be in both directions so that's not a very good club to bring out and be confident about where it's going to go uh, so for me that's why i did the five wood i know the shot shape again my swing's not good by all means but i'm working on that individually i do recommend that if you are looking for any swing advice go seek a professional or uh, someone who knows what they're doing and uh, those people can guide you in terms of swing mechanics. Me, on the other hand, is just course management, how to manage a bad swing around the course. Um, so it's not the worst, it's not the best. But we have managed to get to the center of the fairway and we should have a wedge shot in, which is what we planned for. Uh, so again, if you are on a par four and you're confident hitting your driver and you know where it's gonna go, then by all means hit it. I'm not saying don't hit your driver, I'm just saying if you're not confident, hit a club which you're confident at hitting we want to make golf easy and adaptable for ourselves and thinking of ourselves as an individual. And that's why course management, as much as it's gonna be generic, you do need to tailor it to yourself. So tailor it to your miss, hit in your favorite clubs, and finally play your game. Don't get trapped into playing with someone else and because they've hit the driver really far, you've not hit it well all day, doesn't mean that you should bring the driver out. Okay, so this is important to know your distance with the wedges. This one's showing about 90 meters to the center of the green, uh, the pin, Again, we're gonna work from the pin and work our way back. So we're looking at the pin. It's got a little marker at the bottom, which means it's at the front of the green. So I'm just gonna go for the middle of the green distance. 
Uh, there's a bunker off to the right, so I'm going to go to the left of the pin. And yeah, I'm just going to work it back with my distances. And my 48 should go pretty comfortably to that mark with a bit of a half swing at it. And if you're uncomfortable, line back up. And that is, again, right next to the pin. It's probably a bit further than what it looks. Uh, but what you have seen there is I felt a little bit uncomfortable over the ball. So I stuck, so I stepped back, had another practice swing at it and then attacked it again with more confidence. Uh, the worst thing to do is when you're over a ball and you're not confident, you just go for it anyway. That tends to have bad results. Uh, and as you can see here, we're just about to find ourselves on the green with a fairly decent birdie putt. Um, but again, we're just gonna make sure we two putt for par. So landed it nicely there next to the pin. And again, main thing is we avoided that bunker Main thing is we avoided that bunker. I mean, it would have probably been GUR with all the water in it, uh, but we've got ourselves a good birdie putt here. Okay, not really course management, but management <laughs> will appreciate this. But golf course managers will appreciate this if you make sure you repair your divots and pitch marks as you go. And again, we're gonna line this one up and hopefully make our first birdie of the round. Again, don't fall into the trap of don't leave a birdie putt short if you're not a very good putter. Let's just make sure we get in for an easy tap in par in worst case scenario. Okay, so standing over this, I feel it's a little bit more uh, left to right than I anticipated. So I'm gonna just line it up again. Oh, I tapped it, Jesus. Okay, well, that was a terrible putt. <laughs> but it did perfectly demonstrate what an easy tap in par can look like. But again, one thing we're certainly not gonna be disappointed about is it gonna have an easy stress-free tap in par um, because that is easily gonna make us go under 100. You may be thinking about certain stuff wrong when you've got the opportunity for a birdie or even if you get yourself one par opportunity for the par, but you just miss it, but you end up with a tap in bogey. Again, don't be disheartened by that. Tapping bogeys is going to go around and break 100 easily as well. And stuff like this, just short little uh, course management tips to go around the course like this. You're not going to be in those triple figures anytime soon. It's a very short par five, so it's a very gettable hole, this one. Um, so again, for me, my miss with this club normally goes off to the left. I don't need to worry about trying to smack it. It's 363 meters. Uh, so it's a very short, generous par five, but it is pretty awkward towards the pin. Um, so it tries to trick you into doing, hitting as hard as you can to have a really short approach in. Uh, whereas if we treat it like a par five, we can do like, we could even do like a six iron into the middle and then a seven iron, have a wedge in and we'd still be green and reg. Um, but I'm hitting this five wood pretty comfortable right now. So I'm not gonna change things up. And we've hit that one bang down the center of the fairway. Again, don't need the driver if it's gonna go out of bounds to the right. If you're hitting a club confidently, stick to it. So again, what a lot of people do at the start and why they struggle is because obviously we have 14 clubs in the back, they try to make sure that we're using as many clubs as possible. When in the reality, if you're trying to break 100, keep it simple you only really need to use about seven clubs <laughs> and that's probably generous. You probably get away with less. Know your shot distances that you're comfortable with. Um, so one of the most important things is everyone has a favorite shot distance and that tends to vary for everyone. Pitching wedge, the nine iron and the seven iron. Those tend to be like everyone's kind of favorite clubs. They're relatively straightforward to hit and you can hit them pretty comfortably. So yeah, have your favorite shot distance. And when we work back from the pin, on your approach in, try and lay up to that distance. So then you've got a nice comfortable shot, which you're comfortable with hitting into the pin. Okay, and this shot gives a perfect example of what I was just talking about. 
Uh, again, if it's uh, winter rules, clean in place, make the most of it. But I'm 174 meters away to the green. Um, so I could easily get my five wood to that distance. I could probably get like a six iron to that distance if I hit it well. Um, but at the same time, it brings in so many hazards. So there's hazards off to the right. So if I miss to the right, there's a bunker short. There's trees off to the left. So it's actually pretty narrow to the pin, but the hole tries to bait you in going for that long shot. Very short par five, yeah, so very generous. So we're gonna play it smart. We're gonna go from the bin. We go from the pin, what distance do I want to be hitting in? And also what kind of range, what kind of lies up there? If you know the course in advance, then obviously it's helpful. So I know there's a little valley just before the green. So if I hit into that valley, I just have a nice lie and have my like 48 degree, maybe even like 52 or 60 degree chip into the green with a comfortable lie. It means I won't um, be blocked out by those trees as well. So from here, I'm gonna hit like a, a 120 shot with like a pitching wedge. And then I should have a nice comfortable chip in. I should have less areas to go wrong. It's a, it's a club that I'm comfortable hitting. I'm hitting it pretty well so far. Uh, so I'm gonna to aim to this tree just to the left of the pin. Reason being, it does bank down to the right. Worst case scenario is out of bounds to the right over there. Okay, I chunked it just a little bit but that should be pretty good position. So again, I aim for that tree, knowing that it was gonna bank down to the right, end up going a little bit to the right of it anyway. But as you can see there, I am just in the middle of the green, no obstructions with a clear shot of the pin. So yeah, it's about 40 meters to the center of the green, uphill. So we wanna take that into account. So as soon as I land it on this green, it's gonna stop. It's not gonna roll too much unless I blade it. Uh, going long, there is a bank at the back. It's a downhill green. So an uphill putt would probably be more preferable. And the main thing is we just, if we can just get this on the center of the green, we're green and rag, two putt for par. A little bit short on the green though. But again, don't try and do like a fuller swing with a 60 degree, trying to get it up in the air higher. Um, to make it stop sooner, uh, just get it on the green and then let's get the putter in hand, two putt par, and again, that's two pars in a row, we'll be happy with that. Again, so we pitched up here. Again, didn't roll out too much, like maybe five foot. We're gonna think about what our worst case scenario here is the putt. Uh, so the green's going horribly downhill, uh, like this way. Uh, so it's gonna go left to right. So I'm gonna aim off to the left and we're hitting uphill. Greens are quite slow as we found out from that last hole. But again, worst case scenario is we want to avoid and that's a free putt from here. If we make the one putt birdie, that'd be great. If we don't, easy tap in par. Ooh, just lipped out, gave it a bit too much pace. Uh, we've got a nice easy tap in par, which again, we're gonna line up doesn't matter how close you are. <laughs> Let's line up and uh, not waste any easy shots. The course doesn't give us too many, so we need to make sure we make the most of them. And nice smooth stroke into the hole, just filled with water. <laughs> okay, on to the next hole. Okay, and sometimes the course will have a fairly silly hole where, as you can see, we are right next to a highway, <laughs> which has no net other than these trees to stop it. We're going to do our standard setup. Uh, it's a short par four, so it's like 300 meters. Uh, so again, people try and take their driver, but the most high handicappers have a big slice, so you put it into the road. Um, what we want to do is just aim off to the left. There's plenty of room out on the left. Uh, so again, we're just going to take the five wood. We're going to aim for the center of the fairway with the anticipation it's going to go slightly to the left. A uh, little custom Charizard head cover, by the way. Uh, we accounted for it and we planned for it to go there. So hopefully we should still have a shot into the green. Uh, unfortunately, it might have gone too far. It might be blocked by a tree, but we have course management tips on how to deal with those situations. So uh, let's hopefully uh, show a couple of those off as well. So as much as you want to avoid having bad swing thoughts and thinking about, oh God, I just don't want to miss here. Sometimes it's unavoidable, especially when you've got cars driving at like, 70k to the right of you 
Uh, the main thing is, I just didn't want to hit the car. Didn't do that. Managed for my bad shot, and hopefully, we might get lucky and have a shot into the green. Okay, so we've got a little unlucky here. Uh, so it must have like bounced here, and then it's rolled down to this side. And I'm going to assume that that is us blocked out of the hole, which it is. Okay, so we've got two options. We can try and back the fact that trees are 90% air and try and go through that, which would be stupid. Uh, but we can punch out towards the hole up here or just punch out to the right. Either one's not going to be too damaging. So if you're not very comfortable with your, um, with your punch out shots, then definitely just go out here. You're still going to have a nice wedge shot in. Uh, if you're fairly comfortable, that isn't the worst gap to get through in my eyes. So I'm going to try and go for it. I'm not gonna try and get on the green. I'm just gonna hit probably a little seven iron, roll it up towards the pin. So again, important with this one is we're gonna make sure we miss this tree and also this tree. And we just wanna go out there. So main thing for me is I line up like what I want to go across. So that's just here. So have a little aim point, which you're going over. And again, we're just doing a little punch out. So nothing major, just a little one of those. And again, we're up near the green. Hopefully a nice little simple chip on. We have avoided anything major. Worst case, I hit that tree, end up having to do the same shot again. So yeah, as you can kind of tell, the main thing you want to do for every shot that you take, whether it's on the tee box, in the middle of the fairway, the main thing you want to avoid is the worst case scenario and just get yourself back in a comfortable position to attack your next shot at the hole. So for me, I've put myself to a nice little chip on distance in the center of the fairway. Yes, I could have maybe taken a six iron or a five iron or hit my seven iron a little bit harder, but then that would have added a little bit more loft and it brings in the chance of hitting that branch. It's a fairly tight lie, so I'm just gonna do a little toe down chip with a 48 degree. Um, yeah, you need to make sure your lie is comfortable to do a nice chip shot using the bounce or be really good. <laughs> uh, so at the moment, I'm just going to go a little toe down 48. Uh, land it. I'm aiming slight to the right because the green should bank it down. And let's just make sure we get on the green. And we're going to try and walk away with a two putt for bogey. Didn't quite carry it as far as I'd like, but we're on the green and hopefully we can two putt for bogey. Okay, and just a quick reminder, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, I've got a couple more videos coming up. Uh, one is practicing golf every day for 30 days uh, to try and, oh, practicing golf every, every day for 30 days to see how much I can drop my handicap and also working with someone on my swing, uh, which has been long overdue. This video shows that you can kind of get away with uh, playing with a bad swing as long as you do the simple things right. And these are things that everyone can do. And like I said, if you're hitting like 105, 110 over and over, I reckon if you follow a couple of these tips, you'll be in the 90s in no time. Okay, so it's uphill. Greens are going a little slow. Oh. I thought for a sec that was going to go in. But again, we're going to line this one up, take our time. And that actually hit the flag and nearly bounced out, but it's gone in. So again, get away with the two putt bogey and just playing it smart is the way forward. Avoid worst case scenarios, give it a run. In that case, I probably should have taken the pin out, um, but personal preference. <laughs> Uh, I think it's actually beneficial to take the pin out, but uh, especially when it's slanted like that, definitely take it out, but got away with it. Okay, so we have a temporary tee box here, which means this long par three has actually become a fairly short one, which is quite nice. Distance is showing 129 to the back, which I don't really believe if I'm being 100% honest. <laughs> If you're struggling with par threes and you often find yourself getting double bogeys, one easy course management tip which everyone can do is play it as a par four. Because if someone told you, okay, instead of like a 150 meter par three, you've got a 150 meter par four, all of a sudden that hard hole becomes really easy. 
Uh, so you could just, you know, again, going back to what your comfortable distance, if you're comfortable at hitting 120, 120 meters, if you're comfortable hitting that all the time, then hit a 120 shot, because you know you're gonna hit it there, and then play three shots from there. You've got a par three from 30 meters. I mean, that's a pretty nice, comfortable way to play the hole. So again, try and make golf easier for you rather than harder. Um, but in terms of where we want to miss here, so don't really want to come short if possible, if we're playing for the pin. Also don't want to go off to the left, which I've done a fair few times, um, but anywhere in the middle or at the back is pretty safe and pins also at the back. Uh, so we want to play a bit further if anything. So that's why I'm going to go upper club from the distance it's saying. And we're going to hit a nine iron here. Okay, center of the green, it's spun off. I didn't hit that well at all. Um, but again, because it's uh, above my feet, it was going to go right to left. And I'm not really too sure about that distance. Seemed a little bit off. I think it's about time I got myself a range finder rather than using a GPS app. Okay, so we landed it here. And then <laughs> we've rolled all the way down there. Which is a tad unfortunate. And pins right at the very back. Again though, if we were to play this now, as essentially if we play this as a par four now, we're here and we just need to get this in uh, three shots. That's one way of looking at it and hopefully you'll be able to get easy bogey that way. Okay, and also with here, we've got a nice lie. We didn't go down the bank. We've just got pretty much nothing to work from from the green. We could even use a putter here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a nine iron just to get it rolling and I'm also practicing my uh, nine irons around the green as I normally I go to wedges, but um, I'm trying to play a bit smarter myself, you see. Okay, so again, you're gonna read the green so it goes left to right. Okay, if we can get this close. I thought that was gonna go a lot more right to left, uh, left to right, sorry. Uh, kind of good pace. Just wanna put another ball down. Um, just to see what could have happened. So if I take the putter, for example, I think this is a similar position, I'm not exactly sure. Oh no, I think it's around here. It's uphill all the way. So again, that's a better outcome. So it just goes to show if you are not very comf if, if you are not very confident around the greens if you've got not a lot to go through then just get the putter out play it simple and then we've got an easy two putt for bogey there which is going to easily get us under that hundred and realistically as well if you can go around and get like comfortable bogeys like this um, you're not only going to break 100 you're going to stand a good chance of breaking 90. okay yep so i would have much preferred to have that ball uh, for some reason i thought it was going to go way more that way now we're left with this horrible downhill putt so again we're going to think about where the ball is going to go and I just want to get it so it's a nice easy tap in bogey come over and so I reckon I'm going to aim around here so it ends get the ball out here and then it should snap down towards the pin okay we got it close but again let's just walk away with a nice easy tap in bogey play it as a simple par four it becomes nice and easy again like nasty putt here because if I'd gone long uh, where was I around there because if you go long like that that is still rolling and now it stopped and that becomes a very difficult one putt from there that's for certain another very short par four so 223 meters to the center um, my six iron would definitely leave us with a nice easy wedge in. I'm hitting my five wood well, so I'm going to hit it. Uh, also, again, working where our hazards are. Uh, OB off to the right, so we don't want a club which slices it. So don't get tempted, drop your ego, leave the driver in the bag on the short par fours if there's a big hazard off to the right and you happen to slice it that way. Gets narrow towards the pin, so it's nice and open, like 180 meters. If I wasn't hitting this well, I'd happily just get my six iron out, hit it into the middle of the fairway and give myself a shot in. But uh, because we're hitting the five, iron, five wood well, we're gonna stick with that. Just gonna move that. 
not the best of uh, surfaces here, but this is much better. Oh, getting that low hooks coming out. Nearly on the green on the other hole. Uh, but it's okay, again, OB was off to the right, so that's the main thing. Five woods actually nearly gone in the hole on the other hole. Okay, so unfortunately my phone died, uh, but what happened is from here, we actually had a pretty clear shot at the pin. Um, went for a 60 degree, because I didn't want to land it long. Just for my comfort, that's a little bit too much wet grass to come through. If it was dry, I'd be all for putting this. However, I didn't want to get stuck by just being in there. I wanted to make sure I got out of this. Um, so I had 60 degree. Again, probably not the play, but if you're comfortable with practicing it, can I just do a little toe down and a little putt just like this? You don't need to hit it at all. So I'm aiming to the left. And there we go. See, so nice, easy, and then I had a nice tap in par. Uh, again, short par four, tap in pars, obviously. Obviously I did have my putter on the actual shot which I made and I was in for four. Okay, we're gonna go on to part five and that'll probably be the last hole of the video. Problem playing by yourself is if you don't see it and just hear it, could have literally gone anywhere. Um, luckily for me, I obviously recorded it, so hopefully we can look back on the GoPro and kind of see where it went. I mean, it sounded pretty good. I'm just assuming it's gone pretty straight. Yes. Uh, so downloaded the, the video and found out, actually hooked it to the left. Um, so it must've come through this tree, middle of the fairway. Uh, five wood to the right of this big tree. Should hook in and we should hopefully get a wedge shot in. That's the plan. <laughs> okay, that was uh, a shot on what not to do. Uh, you can see I was a little bit uncomfortable over it as well. Should have stopped. Um, actually bounced back over here and nearly went in the hazard. <laughs> I think I actually, I, I lost distance on that shot. <laughs> All right, so third shot now on the par five. Uh, Got to go over the water and over the tree. Uh, we're going to leave our ego behind, hit a seven iron. Make sure we get over the tree, stay in the fairway. Wedge shot in, let's try and get a bogey. Again, that's the other reason why the seven iron was A, I get it over the tree, but it should have put me to about 100 meters. Uh, 115 meters to the pin, which it did do, and I stayed in the center of the fairway. So again, working our way back from the pin, and then that one has just caught the very front of the green and sat there. And because the pin is at the front, that should give us a very good chance uh, to at least have a chance at par, which would be great considering we hit that stump. Um, pretty short par, so one out there, two into the stump, seven, then yeah, the other 48. So. Yeah, we've got a putt. Worst case scenario here, two putt bogey, and we'll take that considering one of our shots went backwards. Snap in. Again. Nice, easy. Tap in bogey. And we'll take that all day, every day. Yeah, that was how to recover from a very bad tee in second shot and still get bogey. And I'll catch you next time. Good luck out there. Have fun.